Welcome Internet to a Psychologist Casual Review and today we're going to be reviewing a very interesting and short article of Winnicott uh, named The Fair of Breakdown. So before we start let me preface this by saying that um, Winnicott's um, behavior as a clinician was far from ideal, let's say, to be respectful, but I'm not going to delve into that today as I don't think it's important to this discussion. So we're going to stay on a more theoretical um, way of seeing things rather than a, who is Winnicott as a person. So I'm really interested in the fairy and the fairy today is going to be on the fair of breakdown. So it's very interesting because this article was never published. It's posthumous, meaning that it was only released after his death. So he himself never published it, or never made uh, the movements to publish it. And as such, it's a fairy that um, you can see is not as well presented as his other works. And he's also more, um, how can I say, it's more like a draft. It reads more like a draft when you read it. But nevertheless, it's super interesting. And that's why I really wanted to talk about it. Because basically, in this text, he talks about how... In a way, there are certain experiences um, that are lost to consciousness. And it doesn't mean that in a Freudian way, where basically there's a repression that's going on, because that's not, absolutely not it. It's like something that has occurred so early in life that there is no memory, but even no unconscious memory of the event. As one of the, his patients stated, and he takes that in his article and uses it, is that it's a, it's a phenomena, it's something that's not really real per se. It's like, it's like if something had happened, but so early on within the construction and the development of the individual, that it was unknowable, like the anxiety, the agony, because that's what it is, the agony was, in a way, it was felt, but there was nothing to receive it, nothing to give it a home within the psyche. So that means that it stays like basically um, a strange object within the psyche of the individual and it grew and grew and the person in a way tried to defend themselves against the breakdown, the fear of breakdown, but it's a breakdown that's so far back that it's unreachable. And what he says is that it's very important for the clinician to have that in mind, to be able to say those words, that there is a fair breakdown, that something has happened in the past, that the individual could not um, remember, but even he could not have dealt with it. And it's an undealable, an unthinkable event that happened so far back that the psyche was unconstituted. It was not ready for what has happened, and it happened, and there was no elements that could help it to digest what what occurred and he doesn't give explicit examples of what can trigger a fair breakdown and I think in that it's very smart because we would and that's how it always works we would try and like restrain a uh, fair breakdown to certain events and he's not doing any causal link right it's just something it can be anything really but that's something is important to keep in mind because I also think it shows how mysterious it truly, really is and how unreachable it remains, even with an analysis. And that's also a point that he brings up very interestingly, where Winnicott says that the big risk is an analysis that's pointless, that doesn't go that down that way, because basically there is a convenience for the therapist, the analyst and the analysand to try and avoid that and in a way their convergence is going to take them away from the fear of breakdown and that he says is going to end up in something that's not worth the investment of the patient and a failure on the side of the analysis so it's a real true risk and he says that he himself completely underestimated his fears of breakdown and even one of his patients committed suicide and he thinks retroactively because retrospectively, because he was not thinking like that at the time. This was a fair breakdown that he should have been able to to tell, to, to, 
tell it and to share it to the patient so that the patient could try and avoid that breakdown. Of course, it's unknowable and I mean, I understand his grief, but it's unknowable to know if a patient would or would not have done something. But the idea is basically that the fear of breakdown is so deep entrenched with an individual that it's unknowable and it takes so many forms. It can be a, fo- a fear of the void. It can be basically a fear of not being. It can be a lot, a lot of sins. And he says that even a fear of death can be can hide a fear of breakdown. A breakdown because the psyche develops, but that's unknowable. That's bizarre object within oneself is there always knocking always always knocking and it's not the Freudian unconscious where basically if you know then the memory comes back in um, Retour du Refoulé as the French would say meaning the, the coming back or the second coming of the repressed it's not that it's basically something that has developed the psyche the psyche has developed around it but not and to prevent it I see it a bit like the psyche has developed a safe that pushes it so far away that it's not even meant to be accessible anymore. That like it's been completely sealed off. Whereas repression is like a safe that could be opened potentially with the right circumstances. This is not it. This is really it's beyond repressed. I would I, even though Winnicott never uses this word, it's basically it's like foreclosure where it's pushed virtually out of the unconscious, even though he says that it's still within the unconscious, but it's a very, very deep level, deeper than any Freudian and Jungian levels of unconscious, which is very interesting. And I think that the sphere of breakdown is essential, especially with people who have lived such trauma, that not all the trauma are conscious. Some of it remains so deep, so profound, that it's beyond the known and that beyond the known must be in the mind of the clinician that we have to keep it in our minds that there is such an event such a sin that happened and yet we don't know but it's there and a bit like um what happened with the black holes because black holes we were not always certain scientifically that they were there we but we saw how light bended around this phenomenon and that's how we were able to deduce that there was a black hole. Fear of breakdown is the same, at least in my eyes, it's not Winnicott saying that, it's me. But fear of breakdown is basically it's that, it's that we see the effects because the light has bended. But we are not, we don't know what exactly causes it. We just see the effects, the after effects and how the person has organized their whole personality to try and prevent all forms of breakdown and that this these breakdowns might only be helped by pure regression at a point of dependency where the person is able to trust, to fully trust and be dependent on the therapist and how that might, very might, be able to solve those problems. But even then, Winnicott never like stated outright, which means that you we don't know if he w- would be optimistic or not with such patients. But truth be told, I think you can really work with them. And I think that that fair breakdown, even though it's not fully mendable, it can be helped. I really do believe that, at least my point of view as a clinician. So basically, that was a very, very interesting text, and I really wanted to share it. On a little side note, um, he does say that existentialism, in a way, is... uh, fight against the fair breakdown, which is interesting. I had never heard that argument before. And I don't think I fully agree with it, but I see where he is coming from, which is always interesting. So anyway, I hope you like this um, video. And if you ever want to ask a question or even just like and comment, please feel free to do so. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.